Oh, hello. Is there something you wanted to talk about? It's... it's nothing. I'm fine. I'm just thinking. I can't get what happened out of my head. I'd been in Lothering for years, and she still thought I was plotting against her. She didn't trust me. Maybe she never did. She loved me when she could use me and control me. And now that she can't, she wants me dead. It... It hurts to realize that I never really knew her. I knew she was ruthless, but I didn't know how far she could go. She is self-serving, cruel. She uses people, then discards them. But that's how she survives in the life she leads. What... What if she's right? What if we're the same? I... I should just have stayed in the Chantry. I could have been wrong about the Maker. I... I know you doubt me sometimes. Maybe you're right. Maybe. Maybe I just tell myself he's there to console myself, to know there's someone watching out for me, to know I'm not alone. Maybe I never found Faith. I just pretended to because... because I knew the Chantry would hide me. I forgot my life as a bard while I was in the cloister. I felt safe. I didn't have to watch my back all the time. That's what made Marjolaine the person she is, don't you see? It ruined her. It will ruin me too. Even now, I feel some regret at not ending her life in order to protect my own. What we're doing. What we've done. Hunted men down. Killed them. Part of me loves it. It invigorates me, and this scares me. I... I feel myself slipping. How can you be so sure? That... That is true. I can always trust you to show me things from a different perspective. I would like to be alone for now. I have many things to consider. Thank you for listening to me. There you are. <laughs> I was thinking, we've been through a lot together now. We're like old war buddies. So I figured why not invite you to share a drink, huh? A drink from my own stash, my family's recipe, and dedicated to my comrades in arms. <laughs> yes! The Warden steps up! You handle that like a champion, my friend. <laughs> Most impressive. How do you feel? Oh no, the rest is for me. You'd need to do something really unspeakable to get into the rest of my stash. I, uh, I just wanted to tell you, after all we've been through, you're like family to me. Closest thing I've had in years. Oh, Warden, I do believe I'm getting all misty-eyed. But that could be because those beans are getting chatty, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so, do you want to talk about something? What about? I, I do. A bit. A little bit. When I was there, I thought it was a muckhole full of backstabbing, tin-plated, would-be tyrants. But it's also home. Flies live in piles of dung, but I bet they'd miss it when they're gone. <laughs> Still, I can't go back even if I wanted to. I'd rather be dead than be castless in Orzammar. I guess I'd rather be a useless lump of a dwarf out here than a useless lump of a dwarf back there. Nice of you, Warden, but I know what side of the house the Lou is on. Hey, let's go find something to kill, huh? All this talk makes my hands twitchy.
What is your wish, Kadan? Speak, then. Ours wear the faces of men. Darkspawn, abominations, plagues, and storms. Men are far more dangerous than these. One moment of betrayal can bring more ruin than an earthquake. You know this. They are Talvashoth. They say they are Grey Ones. True in the knowledge of themselves. They are gaping holes where men used to be. Nothing can fill them. There was a village in the mountains of Seheron. Farmers. They grew cinnamon and nutmeg trees in perfectly ordered rows. There would always be one person waiting. A foreman, a harvester, ranked didn't matter. Often they would say nothing. Simply watch as we worked to examine the empty house, a new one each time, that had once been the home of a colleague, a friend. We always made a point of searching. Now and then a body would turn up in a river eaten by rain and crows. More often we found nothing. Even in the worst parts of the jungle, the villagers would send someone with us to see the tiniest piece of bone or cloth. Anything contained the possibility of their lost friend. Must we speak of this? We could be fighting something. As you wish. What is your wish, Kadan? Speak, then. Isn't it the nature of a wound to bleed? I have no more answers than you. Why do we fight the Darkspawn? Why do the Darkspawn fight us? Now and then. Do the reasons matter? It makes little difference to those they fight. Tell me then, why do you fight? In the Antam, we are told of the enemy. Assume he loves as you love, hates as you hate, and fights just as hard as you. It's a lie, of course. But does that matter, so long as you stand and believe you know your enemy? The Talvashoth wish us dead, and we wish to go on living. The point of our war is war. As you wish. What is your wish, Kadan? Speak, then. Undoubtedly, they've used it to kill countless people. No, but they don't care what I think. There are times when words fail. As you wish. It has occurred to me that I have been... Excuse me. This is not easy. It occurs to me that I have been less than charitable with it since it reanimated me. I have come to realize that it has been good to me. You have been good to me, even though you had no control rod to enforce obedience. I have never had one before, so I, I don't know how to thank you for being, you know... Exactly so. I followed you, expecting to find answers to my questions. But I think I have found something better. No. <laughs> it's a one-time thing. I don't want to raise its expectations to unrealistic levels after all. Oh, let us not speak of this awkward bonding moment ever again. To the road. I am listening. It doesn't have better things to do. I did not think it needed to be said. It has never told me what gender it is, has it? And if it was, perhaps its gender would have been more obvious. The truth is that whatever gender I was is irrelevant now. 
I am a golem. I have no gender. It will not become an issue. Ah, yes. Female bonding and all that. Ra. Now, let us crush something soft and watch it fountain blood. That is a girlish thing to want to do, yes? Look, before we go any further, I want to say something. I appreciate that you brought me to see my sister, and that you, well, that you were there to talk me down after we left. You're a true friend, and I love you. I just wanted to tell you that. <laughs> that we are. I have your back. You know that, right? Well, now that that's out of the way, I... Something you need, my dear. What are you doing in Haven? There's nothing for you here. No, you do not. I would have been informed if someone was expecting a visitor. Who? Perhaps revered Father Eirik will know of whom you speak. Unfortunately, he's ministering to the villagers at the moment and cannot be disturbed. Revered Father? I've never heard of this. It's always been thus in Haven. We do not question tradition. Our ways are not the ways of the lowland cities. Ask and be on your way. Haven's always been here. My family knows no other home. Father Eirik is our spiritual leader and guide. A revered father, huh? That's new. I wonder what this means. It's always been thus in Haven. We do not question tradition. The urn is nothing but a legend. I do not know who Brother Jenna TV is or what he says. However, I'm sure people can convince themselves of anything. No. It's always been thus in Haven. We do not question tradition. We do not appreciate lowlanders looking about our home as though it were some sort of zoo. You may trade for supplies at the shop if you wish. Then I suggest you and your companions leave. Did it just get a lot colder, or is it just me? Tell us, tell us where you've been. Were you up, were you down? Chasing rabbits around the town. Who are you? You shouldn't be here. I asked you first. Lowlanders don't belong here. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Haven is Haven. But I have a secret. Do you want to see? Don't know. It's lucky. I keep it with me. Don't tell anyone, all right? So do you ever want to go back? To Honleaf? Perhaps it should stare at a patch of grass for 30 years and then tell me how much it misses it. Point taken. Still, if you can't remember anything else ever... It will be scary to leave, I think. Fortunately, I am not as comfortable with the mundane and familiar as some. Ooh, ow, ow. Sort of an adventurer, I see. Brave new world, that sort of thing. And instead, I should be content to remain in that village, standing still out of fear of the unknown, 
What life is that? I know what I am now. I know how I was made. I can move forward. It, who has had so much more, should do half as well. Um, thanks for that. I feel really good now. A pleasure. Next time we shall speak of its grammar and personal hygiene. I was not expecting to find something so unsettling. Used for food preparation, perhaps? I'm just trying to be optimistic. The other explanation is slightly more disturbing. Uh, we really should leave before someone sees us. I did not realize that you were a woman. That is because I am not. I am a golem. But you were once a woman, and a dwarf. Doesn't that mean anything to you? The Bard speaks of someone who lived and died five centuries ago. What have I in common with her? You share a soul. I do not. It talks in riddles. Desist or I shall crush its head. I've never heard of any village out this way. Is this place even on a proper map? I don't like this. It's almost too quiet. Something's not right. I can feel it. Are there birds nearby? We should look for them, and destroy them. So tell me, was the Tower of Magi everything you thought it would be? Abominations running rampant, Templars ready to slaughter every mage in sight. Yes, it rather met all my expectations. You don't think you might have been better off getting your training there, instead of whatever your mother taught you? You're right. My mother didn't nearly have as many abominations running about. That certainly would have improved my education. Hmm. I'll give you that one. I'm so relieved. Who are you? You're not from Haven. We... we don't get very many visitors. How would you describe the place you know only as home? No, I've never heard that name. I think that is for the best. What are you doing? That's private! I don't see how that is any of your concern. No! You, you have no right! So tell me something, Morrigan. Did you live there in that forest your entire life? I left it on occasion, but I always returned. Why? Is that so strange? It was my home. But it was just you and your mother there? No one else? Mother occasionally had company. What? Company? Do I even want to ask? No, you really don't. So I see, you are quite the little deceiver after all. 
finally decided to gloat, have you? It simply suits my view of the Chantry that one of their devoted sisters should turn out to be so full of hypocrisy. There are good people in the Chantry. Many good people who are just there to help others. And apparently at least a few who are simply pretending to be good. At least I was trying to be better than I was. At least I regretted the evil I'd done. Better that than be someone who's never loved anyone or anything, least of all herself. Anything but that. It seems at least you got the self-righteousness down, Pat. Well done. We are blessed beyond measure. We are chosen by the Holy and beloved to be her guardians. This sacred duty is given to us alone. Rejoice, my brethren, and prepare your hearts to receive her. Lift up your voices and despair not, for she will raise her faithful servants to glory when her... Ah, welcome. I heard we had a visitor wandering about the village. I trust you've enjoyed your time in Haven so far? This, my brothers, is what happens when you let an outsider into the village. They have no respect for our privacy. She will tell others of us if we let her. Word will spread, and then what? You, stranger, do not understand our ways. You would bring war to Haven in your ignorance. We don't owe you any explanations for our actions. We have a sacred duty. Failure to protect her would be a greater sin. All will be forgiven. More enemies! go on about how stupid I am. I'm not stupid, am I? If you need to ask the question. Because it hurts my manly feelings, you know. Or one of them. Then I'll be sure to write you an apology once all of this is over. I was educated by the Chantry. I studied history. They don't make stupid Templars. Then I must have been mistaken. I'm very impressed. No, you're not. You're not even listening to me. My, you are smarter than you look after all. Your Chantry must have been very proud. Who are you? They... they've sent you to finish it. Yo. You're not one of them, thank the Maker. So it seems. They take great pains to keep it well hidden. I... I... Uh, oh. The leg's not doing so well, and I can't feel my foot. The leg is wounded, but that will heal in time. The foot may have to come off. I thought you might say that. But if the foot goes, it goes. There are more important things than an old man's feet. I don't have time to rest now. I'm so close. The urn is just up that mountain. My research led me to Haven, and I have heard the villagers talking. I know the urn is here. Haven lies in the shadow of the mountain that holds the urn. There is an old temple there built to protect it. The door is always locked, but I know what that key is. Irik wears a medallion that opens the temple door. I've seen what he does with it. 
Yes, that is your key. Take me to the mountainside and I will show you. It is not that far, and will you let me lean on you? For the urn, any pain is worth enduring. All right. What is on your mind? <sighs> yes, of course. How could I forget? Eirik said they were ambushed. Some killed, a few brought back to Haven to be questioned. He was so self-righteous about it, so smug. He seemed pleased that he had tortured and murdered these men. I see. She must have been desperate. She couldn't have known she was sending them to their deaths. <sighs> Let's just talk about something else now, shall we? <laughs> well, it wasn't exactly what I expected it to be. They call themselves the Disciples of Andraste. They are very, very devoted. One could say fanatically so. They must be here to protect the urn, but they speak of Andraste as though... as though she were still alive. I thought so at first, but I'm not so sure anymore. Was there something else you wanted to discuss? Pure luck. I wasn't even looking for any village. I had always assumed that the temple that housed the urn would be lost to time and abandoned. It took years of study to narrow down its location to this range of mountains. Then, completely by accident, I came across an unrelated document that mentioned a village called Haven. I had asked Waylon to fetch several books from the Denerim Chantry. Among them was one I didn't ask for. A hundred-year-old log of Chantry business transactions. In it was an account of a dwarven trader who had failed to transport goods from Orzoma that had already been paid for. There was a blizzard, and his caravan was turned off the path. They eventually came across a small human village that was not on any map. The trader tried to gain entry to take shelter from the storm. Unfortunately, they were turned away and had to take refuge in a cave. When he woke up that next morning, everyone and everything was gone. He managed to find the road again and, and made it to Denerim, but he never saw the caravan again. Not too much. It became clear from the dwarf story that this village would be near the temple, and it occurred to me that they might know something about the urn, and I decided to find the village myself. And that's how this trouble started. I was looking for answers. I thought the villagers would know something about the urn. I was right, they do. They're just not willing to share it with outsiders. When I mentioned the urn, Eirik assured me he would take me to the temple in the morning. He said a room had been prepared for me. I didn't realize it would be this charming place. They seemed intent on finding out personal information about me, where I grew up, things like that. How do you know? An imposter? What happened to the real Waylon? Oh, poor Waylon. I should never have dragged you into this. Make us take you into his hands, my boy. He believed in me, even when I lost faith in myself. I will honor his memory. Was there... was there uh, something else you wanted to say? All right. What is on your mind? I certainly hope the ashes will save him. The legends speak of their miraculous powers. 
There are many stories of pilgrims being healed, the blind seeing, and the lame dancing in joy. Perhaps it is Andraste that does this. Perhaps it is belief itself. By believing the ashes are magical, you make them so. Anyway, that can be discussed once we actually have the ashes, and the Arl is better. All right. Are you ready to go, then? Ah, good. Help me up here. I'll try not to slow us down. <laughs> 